Hmm. Good afternoon, Bapak Ibu, ladies and gentlemen, uh, representative from the industry, regulators, journalists, and friends in Indonesia and Singapore. Uh, my name is William from Aftec uh, Indonesia Fintech Association, and I'm so excited to take part in today's webinar, Open Banking in Indonesia and Singapore, Collaboration for Innovation and Cooperation. Today's webinar is jointly hosted by Aftec Indonesia Fintech Association, ASEAN Financial Network, uh, Innovation Network, and Brankas, and also proudly supported by International Finance Corporation, World Bank Group, and also BMAX. First of all, thanks uh, for being here to all of you, uh, for making the time to participate. And my special thanks goes to uh, Pak Erwin Haryono, Executive Director of Payment System Department of Bank Indonesia. Also to Pak Budi Ganda Subrata, Vice Chairman of Aftec, and also Managing Director of GoPay. Pak Dian Kurniadi, Executive Head of Payment System Working Group uh, at Aftec, COO of Just Capital, and Director of DIVA. Um, Ibu Mercy Simorangkir, Managing Director of Aftec. Uh, Manis Diwan, Managing Director of ASEAN Financial uh, Innovation Network. Todd Schweitzer, CEO and Founder of Brankas. Ivan uh, Mortimer Sachs, Senior Financial Sector Specialist, World Bank Group. Dirk Van Kwakebeck, uh, Managing Partner of BMAX. And last but not least, Pak Subianto, uh, our moderator and also partner at Freshwater Housekeepers Indonesia. So similar to you, I also think and believe that today's webinar will be very useful and interesting. And it also serves as a strategic platform for all of us to talk more and discuss about open banking in Indonesia and Singapore. Before we start, uh, please allow me to inform you some of our house rules to ensure that our discussion session to this webinar will run well. So when the webinar begins, uh, make sure that you mute yourself when you are entering the webinar. And also uh, you could place your questions in the Q&A box during the webinar. Uh, please mention your name and also uh, the company or organization where you are from. Um, your question will be answered uh, by the end of the panel discussion session. Also, uh, it's <clears throat> highly recommended that you choose your word uh, wisely and keep a positive attitude uh, because we, uh, we just want every good things to happen during this uh, webinar. And yeah, last but not least, uh, we hope that you find this session insightful, have fun, and let's have a productive discussion together. Yep, uh, thank you so much for your uh, attention. And now, uh, without further ado, I would like to invite Pak Budi Ganda Subrata, uh, Vice Chairman of Aftec and Managing Director of GoPay, to greet us with the opening remarks. Pak Budi, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, good afternoon, everybody. Um, it's good to see a lot of familiar faces here. Uh, Pak Erwin, good afternoon. Thank you for making the time uh, in the midst of your busy schedule to, to again share us about the initiative, especially on open banking and open API here. And also to fellow panelists, um, thank you for your time today um, to contribute also to the, the fruitful discussion that hopefully we'll have today, especially in the topic of open banking and open API. I think in uh, to start, it is also encouraging to see that um, that Bank Indonesia as a regulator recognize the rise of uh, digital economy where, where it is also acknowledged that in the future, uh, there will be a lot of innovation needed, especially in the fin finance and banking sector as well. And therefore the interlink between banks and non-banks becomes paramount and important. However, we do also need to realize that especially with banking function, um, a lot of the governance and risk function needs to be maintained. It is a highly regulated industry. So a lot of these banking activities should be done by banks. So essentially the whole principle of bank led activities um, will, will be maintained. Having said that, I think we also recognize the fact that there are more digital platform and how do we ensure that these digital platform are um, utilized properly so that especially in order to support financial inclusion, a lot of these banking features and also uh, banking products and financial services will be able to be offered through a lot of these third party services. Therefore, we believe that the interlink between banking and fintech through the engagement between the two through open API becomes important. 
And we believe that if this initiative, especially on open banking and open API, will galvanize this interlink between between banks and non-banks alike, especially in, in order to really push banking and financial product towards the unbanked. Yeah. So Aftech as an association, I mean, we believe that this is an important initiative and we fully support the initiative because we believe that it really pushes the agenda of financial inclusion and making sure that a lot of the banking and financial product will be offered, especially to people who really need it. And we see that there's a lot of uh, unbanked population still uh, uh, still present in Indonesia. So that's why we believe that this is like a good first step in order to do that. However, we also believe that given the challenges and also the, the, the technical um, adoption that needs to be made is big. So there's gonna be a lot of challenges. There's going to be a lot of questions regarding standards, securities and whatnot, and also um, how to maintain the risk and governance so that at the end of the day, this is a banking feature. We need to ensure that as a custodian, especially who is banking and financial services and also users data, that we maintain security best practices as well as, as, well as um, information security, anti-money laundering principle, consumer protections, um, and what have you. So, um, I think I would like to close my, my opening remark by saying that um, it is a privilege for us to be part of this uh, process. AFPEC will also support this initiative. Uh, we've given a lot of inputs and discussions with Bank Indonesia through engagement with working group by hosting this webinar in the hope of we can really give input to Bank Indonesia in order to make this initiative truly a success and eventually really push innovation, especially in order to push financial inclusion. Thank you. Yes, uh, thank you so much, Pak Budi, for your encouraging and positive opening remarks. And uh, now the next session will be a presentation by uh, Pak Erwin Haryono, Executive Director of Payment System Department of Bank Indonesia. So Pak Erwin will share about Open API Concept in Indonesia Payment System Blueprint 2025, as well as the future of digital banking in Indonesia. Pak Erwin, I cordially invite you to present to us. Uh, thank you, Pak William. Thank you, Pak Budi. Merci, uh, and everybody in Aftec. I um, I just want to make sure my 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 voice can be heard clearly there. Okay, so um, let me start with uh, with uh, appreciation and and uh, acknowledgement. Um, we we really uh, happy to see um, how Aftec uh, really supporting um, our initiatives uh, for for the last years especially when it comes to our new vision of, of payment system so i think uh, today's um, agenda is, is again um, um, really uh, with witnessing this, this this process of collaboration between uh, bank indonesia and, and aftec and, and i would like to thank for for all those um, initiatives in, in aftec part so uh, let me begin with uh, with with the context and then um, Try to give you uh, some 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 um, concept in in blueprint of payment system in Indonesia, and then eventually come to to, to the open API. So so we have a, 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 a bigger context when we talk about this this open banking. Um, so uh, next please. So uh, yeah, we, I will I will start with with context, and then uh, central bank policy and data formation, and then finally we'll, I'll talk about the the open API standard. Um, I think um, when, when we talk about the open API, uh, we really learned a lot from the experience of Singapore when they have their own um, standard um, done by the banking association and then how they relate it to, to the uh, fintech there. It's, it's really um, uh, encouraging how successful they are uh, in these initiatives. So let, let me uh, start with context. So. Uh, um, I'm not really a millennial, so so I will start uh, with this song from 80s. Uh, next, please. So it's from uh, John Lennon. Uh, I don't know if you know the song. It's, it's been a, an old song. It, it's, it's called Beautiful Boy. Uh, the song is dedicated to his son, uh, Sean. Um, so uh, one of the lyrics are really uh, encouraging. The life is what happens to you while you're busy making other plans. So, so here it is uh, during this uh, COVID-19 we suddenly see everything differently, you know, uh, from the, I think, at least from the last two decades, we, we've been talking about digital um, digital innovation and digital transformation, right? 
So many banks, for example, in Indonesia have been talked about this for, for, for some time, but they, they somehow it's, it's, it's rather a concept rather than um, a real thing, right? And then suddenly the COVID-19 hit uh, the country and, and every, every country in the world. And then here's, there's a, there's a, there's a survey, uh, this, this la the latest survey, I think it's, it's just um, released like two or three days ago by, by Twilio. Twilio is a, it's a communication, uh, uh, um, uh, actually it's, it's like a, a cloud uh, communication industry. So they have a survey uh, among 2,500 2, enterprises in the US and the Europe. And it's actually, it's not really surprising when, when they see that 95% of all companies are now seeking the new ways of engaging to the customers, right? So, so the, the, it's, it's really a blessing in disguise when, when you see the COVID-19 in this, in this very uh, angle. So, and then they, they would like to speed up their, their, their digital transformation. So suddenly we now see uh, the, the digital transformation not only as, as a concept. So this is important. Um, uh, starting point when we talk about open banking uh, in Indonesia. So we have in, in Bank Indonesia, we conducted a survey, for example, last year to, to major banks in Indonesia. And then we found that uh, they do have the, 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 the plan of, of open banking. They even have the, the application of API, for example, but it's really, really limited, so to speak. So uh, and then we have uh, we learn from 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 other countries and how they deal with this digital uh, transformation among banks. So we have I, I think everybody familiar with concept of bank 4.0 and digital bank. And then la later uh, there, there's a concept of open banking. So it's not only digital banking, but but then again open banking. And then the concept of of digital banking and an open banking also happening now in Indonesia last year as, as we have the survey at the time but it's rather a limited um, fast forward today we, we have another uh, survey actually we've done um, FGD focus group discussion among banks and it's really surprising to, to, to learn that the the bankers here found that the acceptability of, of people even in the lower group of uh, income people is, is really is really good when it comes to to digital platform uh, i think we somehow underestimate uh, their acceptance we, we always thought that you know digital banking is only for for the rich guys or, or at least for 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 the middle uh, income uh, group of people but not for the, for, for for the lower but i think um COVID 19 suggests otherwise so we have the, the, the survey uh, among banks, among the big banks that have uh, um, uh, a major roles in this uh, digital transformation in Indonesia. And then they all tend to agree that they, they also surprised to, to, to the very positive acceptance of, 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 of people, just especially uh, in the lower income uh, group of people. So here uh, we, we, we found that, as John Lennon say, Life is what happens to you while you're busy making other plans. Probably, I think last year, uh, many banks have, have been planning this uh, digital transformation, but not, as, 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 but not at this, the, the current speed. So I think that's, that's the context, that's the first context that I would like to, to emphasize when, when we talk about the open banking. Next, we also have a, a context more broadly in an economy. We, we, we learn, of course, that many countries now facing um, the risk of um, the economy. They have a, a very low growth or some of them even, even negative growth. Luckily, Indonesia is slightly um, positive, 0 0.5, but, but still uh, it's, it's technical recession, so, so to speak. So uh, we, we, we are now facing many shocks, right? shocks in technology and, and shocks in, in economy and, and so on and so forth. So this is the second um, um, context that we have to deal with. Uh, in the next slide, we learn uh, in, in that current environment, we see very encouraging um, numbers when, when it comes to, to the digital economic activities, even in Indonesia. You know, when we talk about digital economic activities in, in Singapore, it's, it's really obvious that 
because of, of people, they are really familiar with technology, with the platform, the digital economic activities is, is really growing there. But now in Indonesia, we, we now see in the in the grab uh, in the left hand side grab, for example, even during the um, during the the, uh, the 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 episode of the economy, which is not really encouraging at that time uh, for the last months, for example, you see the e-commerce transaction is really stable there. So this is the number of from four major e-commerce in Indonesia because Bank Indonesia now have the data machine to machine with, with all those four, um, four big guys in the e-commerce and really encourage to, to see uh, how, how this e-commerce transaction is really play a good uh, role uh, in terms of economic activities during the, 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 the COVID episodes. Right? So, and also when you, when you talk about payments in the e-commerce transactions, it's really encouraging, mainly uh, done by, by non-banks. So here we see even in the episode when the economy is not really supporting, the digital economy or digital transaction really support that. So you, 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 you really cannot imagine if this not take place during this time. I mean, if you don't have this e-commerce, we don't have this digital payment, for example, probably in Indonesia will experiencing an even lower economic growth, probably negatives. So I think this is uh, this is again a blessing in disguise. Uh, next, so uh, when when we talk about this uh, digital transformation, of course we have to put it in the context of of Indonesia, where um, you know about ninety three million are SMEs uh, in terms of, of of industry, and also uh, two two hundred and sixty five and. and in the 265 million people population, we have so many bank, unbanked people. So when we talk about digital transformation, we, we really have to talk about them, right? So here we can see even uh, an uh, even more encouraging um, situation where when, when we learn about um, how uh, our friends in Aftec uh, really uh, done this, uh, or what, what we call financial inclusion activities in real things, we see this is work, right? So we, from, from Pak Budi, for example, from, from, from GoPay or, or Gojek, we, we, we can see how, how, the, uh, how, the, uh, how, the, uh, how financial technology really uh, play a, a good role in this uh, financial inclusion. So it, it is then, um, really tempting to see if, if we really have a good plan in transforming Indonesia, not only banks or, or firms, uh, but, but, but if we really want to transform the economy of Indonesia, probably this is the way, you know, because, because Indonesia consists of so many SMEs and so many unbanked people. So if you, if you, if you would like to, the economy to grow, Further, you really have to incorporate them into the system, and I think um, digital technology will, will play um, a, a good role in this uh, very plan. Next, so uh, this, this is uh, how, how then uh, we see a really encouraging um, numbers uh, when 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 it comes to payment, uh, for example. So. Uh, this is uh, if you if you see the uh, the, the share of bank versus non bank in, in the uh, uh, lower uh, left hand side of, of, of the graph, you see uh, five years ago five years ago uh, digital industry really um, dominated by banks, but not only I think after four years now we see uh, some big players um, in industry something that really we didn't think about it uh, even slightly five years ago. So this is this is an example and how how then um, friends from 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 Aftec, from fintech, especially in, in fintech payment, really play a good role. How 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 then they they can do that? They they now entering the the ecosystem of of digital economy. So. They, they, they play a very good role in, in, in showing us how to do business in digital economic activities. And, and here you really can see an actual application of API 
because when when you collaborate with the others you, you you're using the, the api something that has not been done as extensive as the uh, uh fintech when, when you compare to, to 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 the bank so i think this is this is an a, a good example of, of of how the application of api the application of open banking done by 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 the fintech and then they they really give a, a really a, they, they contribute um uh really um encouragingly in in terms of a data transformation for for indonesian economy uh, next so uh this is also uh, when when then you, when when you compare what was really happening in bank it, it is really understandable why bank is not as 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 a dynamic as 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 fintech they, they have a problems what 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 we call legacy problems you know banking in the past has really branch models when everything is done um, um, physically they have a, a, a computer mainframe uh, but then uh, every business done by by people when 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 you compare to the to, to the modern banking um, features uh, you you see uh, the, the digital platforms play a key role. This is something that we learn. Banking people learn from 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 the non-bank people, from from the fintech, where where the uh, the digital uh, platform or, or or they call it uh, omni-channel technology really play a key role compared to, to to the bank in the past. And then based on that platform, they use the open API to collaborate with with each other. So this is. This is actually the very basic of, of open banking that would we would like to see happening also in, in the bank. So uh, we, we have seen some evolution uh, in the banks in Indonesia, but 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 again rather uh, limitedly compared to the uh, the whole spectrum of, of, of the bank in Indonesia. And uh, of course, by by having these uh, very uh, initiatives in open banking, we would like to see. Uh, uh, this evolution um, really uh, play uh, in, in place. Uh, next, uh, this is a uh, wait, wait, wait a second. Okay, uh, this is when 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 you see uh, during the COVID nineteen, uh, uh, as I mentioned earlier, digital transformation, especially done uh, by the fintech, is really encouraging. A lot of innovation taking place. Uh, probably we can talk about it later in, in, in the discussion, but we really encourage to see all those innovation, uh, how these uh, new models, new business model come into uh, reality and, 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 and really accepted uh, by, by the people of, of Indonesia, thanks to those uh, innovation. Uh, next. So how then uh, we have to respond to, to all of this um, new environment? Next, so uh, when 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 we learn about uh, other central banks, it, it's really encouraging also to see now they have some kind uh, they, they have a, a seat uh, in 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 the policy in terms of payment system uh, toward uh, a retail payment. Usually, especially in the uh, advanced economies. When it comes to retail payment, usually uh, the central bank really uh, hands off uh, uh, in, in that industry. But but uh, but uh, thanks to this uh, innovation, to technology, and 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 the contribution of of the uh, retail payments in the ecosystem of digital economy, now they tend to 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 have focus on on this uh, uh, retail payment so if we can see uh, uh, some major uh, changes in in the way the central bank really see now the the importance of of innovation especially when it comes to uh, to retail payment so this is uh, the report from from bis bank for international settlements the, the central bank of the central bank uh, when when they see this this reshaping um, um, policy of of the central banks um, uh, around the world, so uh, in this in this uh, point, I think uh, we would like to say broadly that our version of uh, Indonesia payment system 2025 is is uh, is really uh, in in the in the good timing. Uh, next, 
So, uh, so this is the, uh, the uh, English payment system 2025. So it, it is important for us to, to really, in the central bank, to, to really see all those um, development um, uh, in the helicopter view. So we would like to see uh, all those um, innovation uh, will we'll reinforce the integration of national digital economy and in, in finance. So, so we would like to see the transformation of, of Indonesian economy using uh, digitalization. But also at the same time as the central bank, we would like to assure a proper functioning of central banks, especially in the money circulation. So uh, with, with all those um, uh, new types of, of money, we would like to, to, to make sure that everything is in order, that the money creation will be controlled uh, by the central bank because otherwise things will be very messy. And then the, the second uh, vision of, of the uh, blueprint, uh, we like to see the digital transformation within the banking industry. Uh, Budi mentioned about uh, bank-led uh, transformation uh, because of the fact of 80% of the uh, financial industry still dominated by, by the bank. So uh, without transformation in the banking industry, I think it will be difficult to, to, to see uh, a real digital transformation for, for Indonesia. But also uh, equally important to the digital transformation within the bank is the interlink between fintech and banks. As, as you know, we learn uh, a lot about innovation from the non-banks. So I think banks should learn it um, from, from, from the non-bank. And uh, the easiest way to do that is by the application of, of API. So we'll come to this uh, later. The, the fourth vision of the uh, Indonesian payment system is, of course, we have to maintain the, the, the good, um, the balance between innovations and, and all the risk associated with, 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 with those uh, innovation. And lastly, uh, we also have to maintain our national interest in the in the situation where uh, digitalization act is actually borderless, but somehow as, as a central bank of Indonesia, we really have to maintain our national interest in the very new uh, environment. Based on those vision, we have uh, five main initiatives. So we have now uh, five working groups. We work now very closely with the AS ASPI, Association of Payment System Industry in Indonesia. So we, we, we divided all the works into five uh, main working groups. The first is Open API Standard. We would, like to, we would like to speed up the application of open banking to the standardization of, of Open API. So hopefully the, uh, the interlink between uh, bank and non-bank will, will, will be happening very soon. Uh, in the second working group, we would like to offer whole, actually, the whole uh, infrastructure of retail payment system. We now have the Chris QR Indonesian standard. We, we will now launch uh, the BFAS as a settlement. Uh, and so we soon we will have the what we call the uh, integrated payment interface. Uh, and so we, would, we, we even have, would like to, to renew our, our RTGS real time growth settlements. So altogether, uh, we would like to see the, the retail payment system, which is 24 seven real time and hopefully near free. So in, in, in the second and the third uh, working group, we would like to modernize our FMI, financial market infrastructures, everything in, the, in there like, uh, uh, ETP, CCP, and all those uh, financial market infrastructure. In the fourth uh, working group, we would like to concentrate on the data. Uh, we would like to see uh, the digital transformation in Indonesia, but we don't want to see the mono, monopoly, monopoly of, 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 of the data as, uh, as heaven uh, is really, uh, 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 we, we, we see a lot of uh, monopoly in, in, in data in, in other places of, of, of the world. So we'd like to see the, the we have uh, our infrastructure, so to speak, in the data. We are now developing the payment ID, and we 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 will launch our our data hub. So then everybody, hopefully, theoretically speaking, everybody will can can use uh, the data. So not only um, many, uh, not not only uh, uh, owned by 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 fintech or, or big tech um, in in the sense. And lastly, uh, in the work, uh, in the in the fifth uh, working group, we would like to also to change everything in the uh, regulation. Uh, we know, uh, surprisingly, I, I also surprised to learn 
that we know about 135 different regulation for, for payment system. This is too much. So we will we will abolish everything. We will like we will have our uh, new uh, approach in the regulation. We will have uh, what we call PB uh, Payung in in Bahasa Indonesia, which is the the, uh, the Bank Indonesia regulation. Uh, only one bank Indonesia regulation, and then there will be branches of that, but consistent to, to each other. So we will change everything in the regulation. Uh, it, it will have an effect to the entry on an exit policy. Uh, we, we, we will uh, continue to, to develop our sandbox. We call it Sandbox 2.0. Uh, we have a very data, uh, we, we, will we will produce the data policy, including the use of uh, uh, cloud computings and, um, and data localization and so on and so forth, as well as the cybersecurity framework. We also would like to see uh, the application of RagTech and SubTech in, in this uh, working group. So, so all together, those five working groups uh, uh, is, is really uh, 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 an evidence of our uh, holistic approach uh, wh when it comes to the central bank reactions uh, to the shocks in, in digitalization. In, in Bahasa, all together, we, we would like to call it cemumuah, cepat mudah murah aman and handal. So uh, next, uh, so this is uh, the, 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 the context. And then we, I would like to, to emphasize on the open API standardization, which is the, the, the working group number one. Uh, next. So uh, here we'd like to see uh, uh, the, the really application of, of the uh, open API. So we like to standardize the data, the technical security, as well as the governance. We would like to see an organization to maintain all those uh, standardization. Uh, some uh, uh, in a way that um, both uh, the authority and, and industry will will have a very convenient standardization uh, for us to really foster uh, the the application of open banking. So so far we have uh, uh, we we just kick off the uh, the national working group. Uh, I think last last month or on on June yes in June. So now uh, we are now really. Uh, we 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 currently working hard in the uh, technical uh, side uh, consists of of all the members of this national working group uh, to to really standardize uh, the 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 open API. So hopefully uh, at the end of of the the year we we can see the standardization and we will just we will discuss this 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 further. Uh, next, sorry, uh, Pak Erwin, two minutes yep. left. Thank you, Pak. Uh, yes, I yeah. think I will come to this conclusion. So, so this is the the consultant paper of of this uh, open API standard. If you would like to 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 learn uh, in the more technical ways, uh, next. So uh, this is actually the the idea. We have the development objective. We, we have the developer, which is actually Bank Indonesia and some uh, people in the uh, national working group. So then uh, after that, we will have the development stages after we have those uh, standardization. Uh, next, I think this is the last one. Uh, yes, so then uh, there will be sub working groups uh, in this uh, very initiative of Open Web API. So uh, uh, everything is done uh, by Bank Indonesia and, 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 and ASPI. So I, I really encourage um, uh, AFTEC to, to really join in, in this uh, uh, very initiatives. I think I will, I will stop here. Uh, uh, for, for my presentation again, uh, thank you so very much, uh, William and and, and Frank from 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 the from the AFTEC. I'm looking forward to uh, to the discussion uh, for the. So thank you. Yes, uh, thank you so much, Pak Erwin, for your presentation. I'm so sorry for interrupting you, Pak. No, no, no. Yeah, it's fine. Thank you. Yeah, I think if there are millennials amongst the participants, they are going to say that your presentation is isinya dagu semua, Pak. It's a modern day idiom that your presentation is insightful. Okay, Bapak Ibu, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, now is my pleasure to uh, ask uh, Manish Diwan, the Managing Director of ASEAN Financial Innovation Network, uh, for his presentation. Manish? Uh, thank you so much. Uh, that, 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 was, uh, that was quite something. Uh, we are trying our uh, at Apex uh, and AFIN, we are trying to do our best to ensure that uh, you know there's proper knowledge sharing uh, because we, you, you know the, the the genesis of Apex lies uh, from the fact that there was very limited scope for two 
interested parties, financial institutions and fintechs in our case, uh, to actually you know, come together and, and co-create and collaborate on all things nice and great, which you know, uh, largely would earlier be part of only meeting room discussions, right? How do you actually be able to operationalize some of those or forget even operationalizing it? How are you able to even attempt to operationalize some of those things, right? Uh, a lot of institutions, big institutions in the region are very supportive of what we do. They've always been at the forefront of, uh, you know, of digital transformation across geographies. Uh, but Apex was originally conceptualized to support uh, the tier two, tier three financial institutions across the region. It, it was, it is perhaps one of the world's first cross-border true sense cross-border open architecture platform for discovery, experimentation, and digital collaboration. Uh, we are a not-for-profit entity and, uh, and, and we have been brought into life by Monetary Authority of Singapore, IFC World Bank, uh, and ASEAN Bankers Association. And most recently, last year, mid of last year, we had uh, MasterCard and AMTD Foundation join us as part of our uh, larger board. Uh, we also very proudly run what we call as the Strategic Advisory Council, which as you can see on my screen here, uh, is, is a group of some very popular and known commercial organizations uh, who are helping shape up APIX uh, as, as, as the go-to platform when a financial institution in, in Asia thinks about innovation and collaboration. Uh, uh, and we also have a consortium who actually runs and uh, manages the whole business for us, which is uh, Virtusa, Percipient, Fedor, and Deloitte uh, Consulting. Next slide, please. Now, like, like I was saying, you know, we, we are a platform for collaborative innovation. What does that mean? Uh, you know, we, 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 we try and bring ideas to actual experiment platform to be able to touch and feel how a particular service would work. What we have, what we have built a, a very strong, uh, a public sandbox, uh, which works on a low code or no code basis. We have literally put in pre-built coding lines uh, in almost 21 languages on the sandbox so that when your developers uh, with some basic understanding of how uh, an ID, the integrated development environment works, are able to perform critical experiments using FinTechs uh, and uh, bank APIs. Uh, around the sandbox, we have built an ecosystem of services, which essentially support what's happening inside the sandbox. And that includes a global FinTech marketplace. Uh, we have close to about uh, 300 plus FinTechs who are officially onboarded, almost 700 plus uh, have some sort of profile or the other on the Apex platform today. Uh, these are across the world uh, we have fintechs being represented from close to about 50 countries now on the Apex platform. Uh, then what we have also realized that data sharing is creates a big hurdle when a financial institution is trying to work with a fintech because you know the risk guy will come and say you know hey I don't I we cannot share our data with uh, an entity outside of our firewalls. So what we have done is that we have created uh, nearly three million rows of synthetic data on the Apex platform made available for financial institutions and fintechs to co-create and use that data set without having to worry about exposing their data. Besides this, we also provide out of box almost eight to 10 APIs, uh, which we call as uh, connector uh, APIs, which replicate uh, a core banking system. Now what these two do, do is that when you're working with synthetic data, uh, you are able to run your experiments very, very quickly build those and when you're working with the connector APIs the 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 which which replicate an actual core banking system you are actually able to run these experiments in how they would look like in a live environment right without actually exposing your APIs your data sets your environment nothing at all and besides that we also provide a solutions catalog for our fintech community members to come and showcase their solutions use the solution catalog as a LinkedIn, for lack of a better uh, word, as LinkedIn for, for your solutions, right? So next time when you go and pitch to a financial institution and it is expected from a FinTech that you know you will go to every FinTech in the geography 
or the region, which is going to be a very cost ineffective way of doing things. You rather would come to Apex, put your solutions on the Apex catalog and be able to showcase it uh, to a potential uh, uh, financial institution or an investor as the case may be. We also run a very vibrant open community platform, uh, which has close to about 2000 members now uh, from uh, Apex members, Apex non-members, academicians, uh, engineering college students, uh, you know, who all come together uh, to, to work on, on projects, who come for discussions and so on and so forth. Now, Apex has something for everybody and all these things put together create a very collaborative open architecture platform for Finch techs and financial institution. You could use it for business development. You could use it for hackathons. Uh, I will talk about hackathons in just a bit. You could use it for speedy prototyping for financial institutions. You could use it for your investment showcasing by fintechs. You could use it for learning and development. Uh, you know, COVID has created these strange times for all of us where you, you don't really know how to go about doing things. It could be a good idea to come to Apex and actually, you know, get your hands down and dirty in the Apex sandbox and create something new. Uh, you could use it for brand exposure. Next slide, please. Uh, this is one of our newest offering, which is the Apex Hackolysium. Uh, it's a state of the art virtual hackathon platform. Uh, you know, it's said that, uh, you know, necessity is the mother of all invention. And we realize it uh, during uh, in February of this year, when we were about to launch the G20 uh, tech sprint, uh, which is perhaps the most prestigious uh, hackathons in the world, which is being currently been running on the Apex platform currently in its second phase now. Uh, which is supported by the Saudi presidency G20 and the Bank of International Settlement BIS Innovation Hub Singapore. Uh, we realized that, you know, there has to be something which is completely virtual and run a hackathon to a size and shape of the G20 tech sprint. You know, just to give you a scale of which we are operating, we had close to about 300 plus uh, uh, fintechs who came and, and registered for, the, for, the, uh, for this uh, hackathon. Uh, almost 130 uh, applied, submitted their proposals. About 20 of them will get are in the process of getting shortlisted. The, the use cases were provided by uh, three central banks, uh, which are absolutely top notch, uh, critical, critical to quality, uh, critical to uh, the central bank's uh, uh, requirements around, you know, uh, around crypto, around uh, financial reporting, around, uh, around uh, maneuvering uh, situations like COVID. So very critical parts. And, and we were able to, we are now able to run this whole hackathon completely virtually uh, on the Apex platform. Next slide, please. Uh, these are some of the other uh, uh, hackathons that we are running. And I encourage our friends uh, in, in Indonesia who are, who, who, are, who, who want to participate, please do come uh, find us for the Global Fintech Accelerator by MAS, uh, the MAS uh, Fintech Awards and the COVID-19 Financial Health Challenge. These are in progress right now. Next slide, please. Uh, for our Fintech community, uh, uh, we are, you know, Apex, like I said, is a not-for-profit entity and we work very closely with a lot of financial institutions, a lot of industry partners uh, from the region. What we were able to create at the, at the uh, when, when COVID hit us, we realized that, you know, uh, the industry w is, is struggling and, and they needed a couple of things. One of them were for, the, for them to be able to showcase what they do. And that is why Hercolysium came into the play. We gave a platform for fintechs to come and showcase their capabilities through the hack hackathon uh, medium. What we also realized is the need of the hour is to be able to sustain this onslaught of not being able to pitch to anybody, not being able to go to a bank and saying that, you know, why don't you try out my products and services? So what we did is that we created a, 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 a platform for what we call as the Apex Care Program, which is essentially helping uh, Singapore-based fintechs work POCs with, uh, with ASEAN financial institution and also what we created for all fintechs within the ASEAN region to be able to apply for a solidarity investment scheme, which is run and operated 
by our board members, AMTD Foundation through Apex. Uh, up to a $50 million fund was created. We have already had quite a few applicants and I was just informed that almost four to five applicants have come in from uh, Indonesia as well. Next slide, please. As Apex members, FinTechs also get up to USD $25,000 worth of AWS cloud credit. You also get to work on some workspace promotion that our uh, friends at Ascenda Sendbridge run. Uh, and, and I would encourage all of you to come join us at the Apex Open Community and, and also at the Apex platform. Uh, it's, it's a fantastic way for you to showcase your, your, uh, your products and services to the wider audience. Uh, that would be all from my side. Thank you so much. Yes, uh, thank you so much, Manis, for the insightful presentation. So, Ibu Bapak, ladies and gentlemen, the next session of today's webinar is a panel session followed by the Q&A. And uh, this session will be moderated by Pak Subianto, a partner at Pricewaterhouse Coopers Indonesia. So, to Pak Subianto, I warmly invite you to lead this session, Pak. Thank you, Pak Whitliam. Selamat sore, Bapak dan Ibu. Very good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I hope you hear me okay. So, uh, yang saya hormati Pak Erwin, very good presentation Pak Erwin uh, just now. Uh, very insightful and also uh, thanks to Manis as well. Um, so, other than Pak Erwin and I'm, I'm sure Pak Erwin and Manis will still stand by. Uh, there might be some questions later on at the Q&A session Pak and Manis. Uh, firstly, I would like to introduce the four distinguished uh, panelists that are kindly uh, joining uh, today. Uh, so, firstly, uh, we have Pak Dian. Yeah. Pak Dian is an uh, executive head of the Payment System Working Group at Uptech, as well as the COO at uh, Just Capital. Selamat sore, Pak. Sorry. Good afternoon. Thanks for joining, Pak. And then, uh, the second panelist is Mr. Ivan Mortimer Scoot. Uh, apologize if I misspell your name, uh, Ivan. Uh, Ivan is the senior financial sector specialist uh, at World Bank. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. And then our third the panelist is uh, Mr. Dick Van Quebec, uh, managing partners of uh, BNEX, uh, based in Singapore. Good afternoon, uh, Dick. Good afternoon. Good and afternoon. then last, yeah, thank you. Last but not least is Mr. Todd uh, Swizer, the CEO and founder of Brancas, also one of the sponsors for this event. Good, good afternoon, uh, Todd. Hey, good afternoon, Pax Yep. Yeah. Uh, thank you again yeah, for, for I, I'm, I'm very glad to be able to moderate this. Uh, thanks to Aptec for inviting PwC to, to join these sessions. So I think I have been hearing a lot of insights from Pa. Uh, Erwin, yeah, but Erwin, there has been quite a number of questions already as I can look into the Q&A uh, chat, but uh, apparently a number of them are attended to, to yourself, yeah. But bef before that, but Erwin, I think I would like to actually uh, get uh, some thoughts and view as well from our uh, panelists, yeah. I think, uh, as you mentioned, uh, BI has been taking a very good initiative to create a standardized open API uh, platform. And given we have a number of panelists here, not only from Indonesia, but also from uh, overseas. Yeah? Um, so I think it would be good for us to also hear what, what has been happening uh, uh, in the region. So if I may, I wanted to actually uh, start uh, to ask uh, Dick from BNEX yeah, uh, in Singapore. And I think uh, as pa Erwin mentioned that BI has also looking at into what MAS has been doing in Singapore as well. So Dick, I think my question is that I, I wanted to get your view on how you actually experience this open API is actually working, uh, especially the collaborations between the FinTech and the banks, yeah, if you may. Sure, can you hear me? Yes, yes clear. Okay, great. Um, Sure. Um, so maybe very brief background. Be next. We're an early stage uh, investment vehicle based out of Singapore, but invest actually largely in India, Southeast Asia, including Indonesia, Vietnam, etc. So we don't invest too much uh, in Singapore. And I would I would actually like to double click on a market where I'm very familiar with the payment infrastructure, which is India, and. Um, India has really become sort of the poster child of its own 
in, in terms of fintech, fintech adoption. And, and what, have, what they have built is what we refer to now as the India stack. The India stack really starts at the most base layer, i.e. being able to identify biometrically uh, every citizen in the country, um, which enabled, uh, and that's called the Adhar layer. So everybody has an Adhar biometric identity that's stored in a central database, which any fintech or bank can communicate with via APIs. So it's really starting at the base layer and then open banking is much, much higher in the stack, but it starts much, much lower in the, in the stack with an API first infrastructure. Now, if we fast forward, there are a lot of different layers in between before you get to the open banking API stack. But if we fast forward just to, to that piece of the FinTech stack, um, I think we, we are seeing very, very positive signs of adoption. So all the large players on the one hand, on the consumer side, i.e. folks equivalent to a Gojek or a Traveloka are embedding FinTech use cases into their um, into their natural cohort and, and app flows and are actively deploying fintech as an additional revenue monetization stream for themselves and are doing so in a very collaborative manner with large incumbent banks. Usually the banks and these um, uh, constellations uh, play more the role of a regulatory and compliant gatekeeper as well as enabling the startups to build cohort, uh, fintech use cases that they otherwise wouldn't be able to do. Uh, the other thing that's interesting, we're seeing, we're seeing fintech use cases that were previously unimaginable for incumbents banks to actually target, either because they were from a unit economics perspective, i.e not enough margin, absolute margin dollar on the, on the transaction, possible, physically possible, but due to sort of a symbiosis and a collaboration between FinTechs, which are digital first by nature, and um, leveraging the digital interface from the bank to, to, to collaborate, um, these use cases all of a sudden become actually an increase in market share with regards to net new fintech uh, in the industry. So those are maybe some of the bigger observations. So net net, it increases the market and um, fintech anywhere is being adopted by not necessarily fintechs, but by anybody who really owns a cohort. And due to sort of the, the, the margin structure of this uh, collaboration, um, new fintech use cases are actually possible that were pr previously simply unprofitable. Yep. Maybe just one quick question before I, I move to the other panelists. What are sort of the challenges that you see, you know, uh, other than sort of the success that you just uh, uh, mentioned? What, what are the challenges? <laughs> I mean... <laughs> Sorry, it's a tough uh, Yeah, question. I think it's a pretty big question, right? So my, my question would be how long do we have? But um, I think they're very human in nature. So whenever you have digital change, right? And if we, if we ask ourselves really, do we think that in five years from now, we're gonna be less or more digital? And if the answer is yes, uh, we're gonna be more digital, I think then digital change is, we cannot halt it, right? Um, and then the question is really like, how do you adopt and how do you build acceleration? And I, what I observed in India is that a lot of the banks focus on first the API, API piece. Instead of going for digital bank first, they go for API. Why? Because it's a healthy investment into their core and sits right on top of their core banking, right on, on top of their lending software, et cetera sits right on top of that and communicate and, and teach them also a lot how startups think, how startups work, how do you build velocity in your own organization and sort of when you work with startups, the only advantage startups usually have is velocity, right? So direction and speed uh, when compared to large companies. So that is actually a positive um, side effect of it that folks that are that the business are actually getting getting energized and getting 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 
Thanks. Yep. Thanks. Thank you, Dick. Um, I think that's that's holds very true. Uh, it's good that we were here because we are just about to start this this journey. Uh, next, I would like to get the view from Pa Dian Pa. Um, um, I think as Pa Erwin and and uh, previously also the team has been um, sort of. I think Pa Erwin has alluded as well. What sort of the objective of this uh, standard open API Pa essentially is to drive a consistencies uh, and also providing guideline in certain areas. I wanted to get your view on, on how you foresee this sort of uh, uh, um, you know guidelines that BI has put up can really be implemented by the industry player, Pak Dian. Okay, um, selamat sore Pak Erwin, uh, Ibu Mirza, uh, and uh, good afternoon to all panelists and all audience of this event. Okay, um, this is quite an interesting um, question and also this is also um, my question as well um, uh, when we discuss uh, in our uh, association and also with uh, ASPI uh, for the uh, uh, payment system yeah so um, this is actually um, I if I can uh, going uh, back here yeah, um, when we were open our banking in the year 1990 uh, for the first internet banking mobile banking in the late 1990s, yeah, when because I I personally uh, involved in the seven internet uh, and mobile banking projects in Indonesia, uh, this is also the 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 same thing. So that uh, this is secure. Yeah, whether the our uh, customer is ready um, to interact uh, without helping uh, by the customer service and teller and all that. So. Um, um, during uh, during our uh, discussion with the uh, Bank Indonesia and ASPI and also um, Pyrwin and the team um, already uh, set up uh, the, the working group. So this is like uh, our platform to uh, think about the discuss uh, to think about the, the the procedure, the SOP, and the discussion. So um, uh, we 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 see that the the guidelines is already clear. Yeah, uh, with the BSPI. Uh, uh, 2025 that we also already have the target we have already like the uh, regular uh, discussion uh, from aspect um, ASP and also Bank Indonesia and then at this moment um, uh, for the this open API we, we focus on the uh, three things uh, which is the data standard um, because this is open API so there must be interoperability between the API owners, which is we see this is the like the financial institutions and uh, some of the fintech uh, company. Uh, we focus on the fintech uh, payment first, um, and then whether this um, uh, data can uh, be communicated uh, amongst uh, these industry players, and also uh, the other things is the uh, technical standard. So whether um, from this open API from the uh, communication protocol, assay texture, and also uh, uh, data format protocol, um, we need to standard whether we use the JSON, SIML, or even some of this, I don't know whether we use the ISO 8553 and all that, yeah. So so this is uh, from our discussion. Of course, we will use the, the, the latest technology. And the other thing is that this is this quite tough discussion and every time we, doing in uh, working group is the uh, security standard. Whether, because the security not only is like the um, hack proof, but also uh, about the uh, data privacy, data integrities, and also like the system security. Uh, well, uh, this is because like internet banking, uh, mobile banking, uh, before we just open uh, like the front layers of financial institution. But with this open API, we open uh, um, the, the connectivity is um, going more deeper to, to uh, close to the banking uh, uh, core system. Uh, of course, there is uh, some middleware, some of the uh, API management and everything. But again, from the uh, security perspective, we need uh, to see not only from the technical security, but also from the social engineering because you know, uh, uh, if there is some open uh, access, then there is a lot of creativities uh, of the, um, I, I quote, not hacker, but all the social engineering hacking 
well there is uh, some manipulation uh, to do that so this is the, the things that uh, we see and then um, um, the guidelines uh, um, is already clear and then uh, the, the target and also agenda we also already set up uh, whether we, we we set up the milestone to deliver okay yep Thanks, Pa Dian. That's uh, very clear, Pa. I think you have mentioned it right to the point as well. One of the key aspects in the open API, obviously, is relates to the data sharing, Pa. Yeah. And I think when you talk about data sharing, uh, it's always both sides. Yeah. I think both fintechs and also the banks has 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 the equal uh, role to play in this area. But I think ultimately, what is more important is to create a safest uh, platform and rule of the game as well, so everybody is clear about you know. Uh, what to put, how to put, where to put, and so forth. Okay. I, I think still links to that, I will move to a uh, thought from Brancas. Uh, good afternoon, Todd. Um, I think Brancas has been a key player in, in this particular area, and I think um, with, well, it will be very good as well to get your view on, on how you see this open API you know, uh, framework or standard can really be applied uh you know at, at at the right course of course in indonesia yeah thank you uh so so brancas was founded almost four years ago in indonesia and we've since uh, expanded to uh, philippines vietnam and thailand really operating on both sides of the open api economy right so on the one side we work with banks primarily banks but really anyone on the financial institution side that is the provider of open APIs, right? Um, and that is, that could be for payments, that could be account opening, that could be for transaction data. And then we also work with what we call the demand side, which is enabling uh, FinTech partners and online businesses to use those bank APIs uh, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a standardized way. So even before the Bank Indonesia roadmap and before, you know, the Central Bank of the Philippines and Bank of Thailand started working on their respective working groups, we already noticed that there was a very strong commercial use case, actually, you know, revenue to be gained by both fintechs and the partners that they work with in order to build uh, 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 new products and new distribution channels. And I think, so what we've seen is a few things. I think, you know, the common conception is that open banking is a very developed market thing, right? So this came out of, primarily out of the UK and Europe, to support payments and account management. I actually have seen in Southeast Asia and Indonesia in particular, that open banking is fundamentally a financial inclusion initiative. Because as Dirk mentioned earlier, we're changing, it changes the economics to make it profitable to give financial services to certain populations, right? And a lot of banks, I mean, Indonesia, the banking penetration is still under 50%. In Vietnam and Philippines, it's well, under, well above 70% unbanked, right? And the, a lot of the reason for that is that it's expensive to serve the mass consumer segment, right? And so I think what we've observed, at least in the last few months with the COVID situation, is an acceleration of financial institutions building in the API layer so that they can more quickly work with fintech partners to extend distribution, right? And so we've seen things like new account opening APIs so that banks can offer uh, uh, offer basically customer acquisition or customer onboarding through third party channels, right? We've seen things like um, uh, uh, online loan processing. So I was just looking, actually Tokopedia has, I think 17 lending partners now for their merchants, right? So that's incredible. So there's, there are online marketplaces where you can apply for a loan product end to end entirely on the merchant page of the, of the, of the, of the e-commerce site. So my point is, there's a number of commercial use cases that make open banking very attractive for both banks and for the, the fintech and, and, and online businesses. Um, we're excited to see a, a standard um, be developed by, by Bank Indonesia, and we were a contributor to the, uh, to the, to the policy, uh, to, the, to, the, to the draft policy paper. Um, and I think it's, it needs to come both ways because Frankly speaking, there will be some large banks uh, that have a certain market position that they want to protect, and they potentially feel some concerns about the open model, right? And my impression is that's totally fine, 
that's totally fine because the every bank you know if, if banks one through three feel nervous about it and feel like they're going to lose market share then fantastic then let's encourage banks four through 40 right to provide an open model and build products and win customers right so i think it it needs to come both ways and indonesia is a fantastic example of i think top down uh really strong best in class policy development with bottom up commercially driven use cases and so it's a really exciting kind of ground zero for emerging market uh, open banking yep very true thought i couldn't agree more i think two or three points that I pick up here. I think obviously with COVID that accelerate everything. And I think at the end, who is really holding the power is the customers, right? If the customer really wanted a one-stop services as you have uh, eluded, then I think the banks as well as the FinTech pretty much have to, to collaborate together. Um, with, with that, I think I, I'm, I'm moved to Ivan. I, I think uh, looking at from, you know, the policy study perspective, um, as, as Pa Erwin also mentioned, the ultimate objective of this open API is part of the plans to achieve a bigger financial inclusion, which is a very important uh, goal for Indonesia. So, Ivan, I'm, I'm keen to hear your view as well, you know, on, on what do you think about, you know, for the country like us, uh, how we can actually make this open API uh, a, a success uh, story. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I, I, I mean, I would tend to agree there's a, there's a lot of opportunity, particularly in fast growing emerging markets like Indonesia, for this kind of approach to really ch shift gears in terms of financial sector development. Um, and, you know, perhaps more importantly, what I would call real sector development, because, you know, ultimately, the financial services sector there is, you know, is important. Um, in many ways, you know, from a macroeconomic perspective, but often we lose sight of the, um, the role it plays really in enabling the real sector. And that's where I think, you know, as Todd said, a lot of the demand has to come from innovative use cases where finance, you know, as a digital product, you know, is, it's a little bit like water. It's, it's, it's fluid, it's flexible, it's everywhere, but it's essential. And this trend towards API banking is really just another step in the evolution of technology, enabling us to realize that fluidity and flexibility of finance that should have been there in the it before, but we were constrained really by technology in many ways as to how we could do that. Um, so I think that um, that's kind of the sort of philosophical context in which we find ourselves. The, the opportunities, I think, for countries like Indonesia um, lie in the fact that, indeed, while the real sector is growing very fast, there is this gap in which traditional banking models have not yet really fit in an economically uh, viable way and also in a way which really responds to some of the um, behavioral needs, both from a business perspective and a personal perspective, the way into the needs of those real sector users. Um, and I think it's by letting the, the, the real economy actors, now not just fintechs, but indeed, e-commerce players, we see many actors in the agricultural sphere, in the retail sphere, um, across a wide range of domains, we can see increasingly digital native companies thinking about how they would redesign finance for themselves um, if they had uh, the means to integrate processes seamlessly to access new types of information, um, and to embed them in the way they do business in an innovative way. And it's those companies, I think, that will end up driving the way in which collectively banks and fintechs and other financial market infrastructure come together to, um, to realize some of the potential. And along the way, we need to deal with a lot of these challenges regarding how we maintain stability of the banking ecosystem, um, how we maintain high security standards, and we don't just let any actors come in and access this, this very crucial source of information um, and access crucial payment systems. And those, those are the challenges that the regulators, in particular in this instance, the central banks, need to deal with. 
alongside, you know, hand in hand with other regulators that may be concerned with efficiency issues, competition issues, and, and um, other bespoke activities in the financial sector. Yep, thanks. Thanks a lot, Ivan. That's, uh, couldn't agree more as well. I think um, essentially this is, this is, you know, if the technology has been accessed long ago, this is perhaps what the customers would really be much enjoy this uh, digital banking or open API, uh, you know, concepts, yeah. Um, we, I think we still have some time before I move to the Q&A shortly. Um, so I think we, we talking about you know uh, the some of the challenges as I previously asked to, to dig as well and um, I think but the end has also uh, mentioned what are the key aspects that this, this open API is really covering and and what has been done uh, so far um, so I think my, my next question before I move to the Q and a uh, obviously, with, with every new uh, regulations, it will require you know, a more uh, clarity as well as uh, uh, some of the, the stakeholders involved. And I, uh, if I understood correctly, Pa Erwin, uh, in Bank Indonesia has already sort of wanted to establish sort of like a SRO type of things yeah, yeah, for, for sort of like a governing body but for, to manage this open API. For example, if there is any dispute that it, this governing uh, body can, can be able to, to resolve on that. So I'm keen to hear the view from the panelists as well, um, you know, whether you have some uh, a view as well, especially maybe I'll start again with Dick as well, uh, you know, your observation in Singapore or India on how this governing body, uh, do you have something like this and, and how it's actually being played out, uh, if, if you're aware, uh, Dick? Yeah, so let me maybe go back to, can you hear me? Yeah? I have yes. two mics, that's why I sometimes get confused with the Zoom unmute and the mic has a different <laughs> unmute button. Uh, so part of the investment in the COVID uh, world and staying at home and having webinars. So, um, so let me again like take you on a journey to India, right? Uh, simply because I, I, I'm fascinated by the market and spend a lot of time. Um, there you have various industry bodies that were part of the innovation process. And to be honest, it took quite a bit of the government involvement, if you look deeper into the India stack and then ultimately cumulating in an open API to drive this change because there's inherent resistance to change, right? Um, many of them are fearing as Todd alluded or others for profit pools, et cetera. But if you want to do right by the country and by the people, you make sure that everybody has access as, as Ivan mentioned to financial products that uh, at the right time for the for in the right magnitude or size or form and and that that really requires why is it acting more as water now the way i observe and 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 sort of if i like really go at the beginning of the india stack to the abhar layer the, the the foundation of it all was really already cemented some 10 years ago it was a massive effort where the government drove essentially through various local centers um, the wave to, 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 to aggregate or to collect biometric data at scale. So you had stations, government approved, where everybody by a certain point of time had to um, drop their biometric data. Uh, otherwise, you would run into troubles as you had government runs to make with official documents and you weren't registered yet with Adhar. So they put a hard stop, if you will, on it. From a dispute management point of view, um, I think there, so far it has been, before getting to the dispute, I would go actually in the creation. So I think to avoid dispute, you have to have a good collaboration on the creation process if possible. Here, there's a, probably one entity worth highlighting called iSpirit, which is government closed and private sector closed that has ideated a lot of the translation between technical requirements, dispute management, as well as um, private sector requirements of government um, ideas. And I think they have just done a very good job at making sure that it's a very decentralized system with um, 
by the onset. So for instance, you, you alluded to KYC, is it not KYC, you alluded to um, the data security. Data security in India is solved through a problem, uh, through a setup called data locker system. What is a data locker system? Again, it requires a lot of different entities to come together, but ultimately a telco, a bank, a utility company, an online player, they all spiel con like their data on a particular user into what is called a data locker, which is sound, safe, and secure. An individual has the right to unlock um, certain pockets of data for, um, for uh, a particular counterparty in a transaction. So if I want to open up a bank account and the underwriting bank requires a proof of address, I unlock a certain document in my data locker for 24 hours for the consumption of this bank to underwrite myself. So what I'm trying to say is here, the design, the system design of the stack has been very well thought through so that there's less areas of conflict. Um, then on the concrete conflict resolution management, it's pretty commercial at the moment, I would say. So I have not seen uh, many involvements from the regulator or alternative associations that have sort of referee because that would, uh, or act as a referee function because I think that would be also limiting the idea of APIs and APification of, of FinTech and, and overall economy. Yep. Thanks, thanks, Dick. I'm conscious about time. I think maybe I'll just move to the Q and A sessions. Um, so actually, we are. I was told by the MC we should have aimed to finish like for you know five minutes past four. Uh, sorry, Pak Erwin. Sekali lagi, Pak. Looks, I'm looking at the Q and A, and uh, looks like uh, a lot of question actually is being addressed uh, to to you, yeah, Pak. Um, so maybe I'll. I'll uh, I'll pick uh, you know those that are um, I would say most uh, relevant. Yeah. So maybe I'll start with the um, the second question from Bu Ida uh, from OJK. By doing the interlink between fintech and bank is very interesting. Uh, but uh, how is the uh, roadmap? I think this is perhaps a quick question, but but I just thought uh, maybe it would be good for you to reiterate uh, that again, Pak pa Erwin. Sorry. Uh, okay, um, uh, Bunida, I think th th this is a very good question. So uh, many, many, I think I, I will also uh, uh, refer to, to some other question uh, that I can see from the Q&A uh, platform. So I think m many countries have a different approach uh, to, to this open API. There's, there's also a question uh, comparing the open API in Indonesia to the one in, in the UK, for example. I think the UK case is, is more like a um, regulatory approach when they have the 2018, they have the open API, but somehow it's not really um, developing in a way, right? And then there's another uh, way of, of doing that, which is the Singapore way, so to speak, right? I think Manis really have a good point there. So uh, the uh, Singapore Banking Association and, and the MAS uh, work together and, and create this standardization and, and further even uh, develop into the API X, uh, API exchange that uh, many have, have put forward in, in this um, session. So it, API X is really interesting to see because it's, it's like um, it's like an e-commerce for, for API. So when everybody can see what sort of the API and then how then can they deal with that. So uh, I, I, will, I will expect that it will really uh, boost um, the application of, of API. So, but then again, the Singapore case, we, we can say it's like um, industrial approach uh, compared to the, to the UK's approach, which is the uh, regulatory approach. So I think in, in, in a way, I think if, if you look at the uh, performance of those two models, I think Singapore's models work well uh, for, for, for Asian uh, banking. So, so hopefully then, then, then we, 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 uh, we, we follow uh, <laughs> the way from, from the Singapore with, with having the standardization, so to speak. I think API X somewhere along the way can also be possible for, for Indonesia. But let's start with the standardization and then uh, governance and, and so on and so forth. So it comes to the question of, of Buida. Uh, what is, uh, how then it will really uh, uh, operate in, in real time? I think the best way, uh, the, the, the best solution is when Bank Indonesia and OJK really work together in, in having this journey of, of, of open banking, right? 
So I think it, it should be start with the, the, the view that the banking in the future will be different from, from the banking today, right? So because of the customer experience you just mentioned, Pasubi, so everything will be different. And then the different uh, business model associated with the, uh, with the demand from the new um, customer experience, right? So that's why they have the platform uh, in, in, the, in the new bank. So for example, if you look at the bank 4.0, they said like banking everywhere, never at the bank. Because basically bank tomorrow is, uh, is, is the technological company with the finance, right? So it, it, it has different uh, business model with, with, the, with the, the, the uh, yesterday's bank. So in, in that very situation, open APA really play a crucial role because you have a different, uh, um, you, you, you have different customers, you have different business models, you have different banks actually. So the only way to, to speed up all those transformation if, if through the, co the collaboration with the bank and the, the non-bank, right? So uh, I think uh, the good way to, to do that is if, if Bank Indonesia and Ajika can, can collaborate more uh, in, the, in the journey of, of open API or open banking uh, for Indonesia. So uh, in, in, in our case, we, we just limited the open banking cases, for example, only in payment so far because that's our, our authority so far is, is in, in payment, right? So uh, for, for the banking, I see, uh, we should talk to Ojeka and then if they agree to, to also um, uh, continue the, the, the journey in the banking, that will be perfect, that will be perfect. And then we, we, can, we can relate it to the context of Indonesian economy where many unbanked people or many SMEs and then also the, the very experience of, of fintech, how they related those in, into the, the business system. So a lot of things to do, but I, I think I'm, I'm excited to, to see uh, uh, these uh, initiatives in, in, in the real world. Yep. Thank you, Pak Erwin. So maybe one, one more question, Pak Onda. That's uh, pretty much you touched on already. Um, I think there's a question coming up as well. Uh, do you think the fintech industry has been given a sufficient role yeah. by the governments uh, to support the economic recovery um, that maybe you you want to answer that yeah, part that's, 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 that's a good question but i would like to answer in a different angle i think you guys in the fintech industry have have really have proved it really well during the COVID situation where you where really contribute in the economic activities i, I said earlier i cannot imagine if indonesia doesn't have those uh, digital platform in e-commerce as well as in the payment. And, and those are contributed by, by, by the FinTech, right? So uh, you, you, you guys in the FinTech industry have proved it really well. So how then we, how then, uh, we as government or, or regulator can, can, can push that contribution? I think in, in Bank Indonesia's case, we have a very clear um, direction uh, using this blueprint of Payment System in Indonesia 2025, and, and and that very blueprint. We we're not only talking about open API. We talk a lot about the the, 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 the importance of retail payment system, the digital retail payment system. We, we we talk about the the importance of infrastructure. When we will we'd like to build that infrastructure, becoming the public goods. We talk about the the, the use of data because many experiences in in other countries shows that the, the development of fintech becoming the big tech is the case of monopoly. We, we, we don't want to do that. So now we, we are thinking to have something like digital ID and we call it payment ID. And then further, we would like to see the, the uh, data hub, for example. We even, we, we even would like to offer a whole, the new regulation uh, for, for the payment system. We, we would like to introduce uh, the new set of players so uh, not only the regulation and, and so on and so forth. I think that's, that's, that's our uh, contribution uh, for, for, for the fintech industry. And, and if you guys would like to follow that, I think it will be, it will be perfect. We would like to see the digital uh, transformation in Indonesia uh, in, in a more um, uh, integrated approach. Uh, I hope that that will contribute uh, to, to, to the fintech industry in Indonesia. Yep. So the idea in, in the future, once this open API has been started up, you know, the, the standardized in data security and everything, but yeah, 
Uh, does BI also, I think it's being asked one of the questions as well, does BI also foresee there will be a data sharing happenings between fintechs and the banks? Um, yeah, I think the, the very idea of open API is through the collaboration, actually using the data, actually. At the end of okay. the day, the digitalization is about, about the data, the, grand, the use of granular data. I think um, uh, fintech industry shows us uh, how then can play around with, with this uh, new uh, sort of data and, and creates uh, new business models uh, using that, 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 that data. I will give you yeah. one example. When, when we talk about Chris, for example, we, 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 we would like to see Chris used by many, as many as merchants as possible. We talk to traditional market, for example. So for, say I, am, um, I, 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 I sell Baso, for example, using cash. After the payment, it is gone, right? But when, when they use the Chris, all the data will be recorded in, in our um, uh, data mainframe. So, so later on, later on, all, all those granular data can, can also uh, be used, for example, as a basis uh, for, for credit rating, for example. So that, so many possibilities of, of, of using all the digital transformation where the infrastructure also owned by, by the public, so then it can be shared uh, to, to, to the industry. So that's that's actually the, the very idea of working group number four, which is the, the, the data uh, working group. But of course, uh, you, you, you really have to, uh, to play it um, uh, nicely because otherwise everybody will be surprised. Uh, I, I, communication is, is, is also important, uh, possibly. Very true, but I think that's that's definitely is this the the key one, uh, and maybe I'll move to uh, the, the, there are questions from Joan's Dava asking about the security in Open API. I think it addressed to Pa Erwin and Pa Dian. Maybe I'll move to Pa Dian, yeah, Pa Erwin, Pa Dian first. Um, so the questions, you know, uh, as Pa Joan mentioned, that the the biggest challenge in Open API um, is actually uh, the security standard itself. Uh, has not been standardized and given uh, as and also there has been no data protection regulation yet yet yeah i think it's expected to be issued uh, soon um, so the question what are aftec and bank indonesia point of view regarding uh, these challenges of open api uh, and what are the futuristic technology which will be applied in the open banking to secure the safety of customer personal data maybe if i may ask pa dian to give your thoughts on this but Okay, uh, thank you, Pak Sibianto. Um, so, um, like for the like the uh, data uh, customer data protection, actually um, there is the RUU, uh, the Rancangan Undang-Undang for the Customer Data Protection, which is um, I think in the last two weeks, um, uh, Pak Budi Ganda Subatra uh, from uh, Aftec and some uh, of our Aftec colleagues um, already. Um, um, doing the uh, hearing with the our parliament in DPR, yeah, about the RUU, RUU, the uh, the data protection. So this is um, uh, this um, what um, uh, Aftec and ASPI and I also, if I'm not uh, wrong, there is the idea. Idea is the uh, e-commerce association also invited by the parliament uh, to give the feedback uh, uh, from the. Um, uh, rancangan undang-undang, ya. Yeah. Um, and then about the uh, security uh, standardization, uh, I think uh, we have like the ISO uh, 2001, we have the PCI DSS. Again, uh, for the uh, securing the data is is not uh, like the uh, issue anymore from the technology point of view, ya. Yeah. Uh, I mean that we have all the encryption, we have the SSM, the host security module, uh, we can do uh, the, 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 the protection uh, since beginning the data uh, originated and uh, when uh, it is transferred and also uh, and accepting it. It's, it's not um, a new anymore from the, the, the security yep. uh, encryption point of view. But again, the important thing is the, the regulation standard, yeah, how like the customer consent and also if the customer want to delete the data from the one institution or for the all institution that uh, they already 
uh, put the consent is how is the mechanism. I think uh, that one is uh, we are happy that uh, there is the uh, rancangan undang-undang um, uh, already in talk in the parliament and then uh, once it's um, already approved then it is also one of our um, like base uh, of fundamental uh, to deploy the the mechanism the sop on, on securing the data uh, from the data transaction and also for the customer data okay yep thank you for thank you um, I think I'm conscious about the time. Uh, I'll just move to to the to the next questions. Yeah, thank you, Pak Dian, Pak Erwin, makasih, Pak. Um, I think the next question. This is for all the panelists uh, coming from Joanne as well. Uh, what are the most essential operationalization of Open API to promote the efficient collaboration of bank and fintech to support the financial inclusions? So I wanted to ask. I think Manish from Afin, your uh, perspective as well, yeah, uh, on on the operationalize, uh, which I think you have eluded a bit in your presentations. You are still on mute, uh, Manish. Yep. Uh, so, uh, see, I, I think the first first things first, uh, as as institutions, uh, we need to realize that there is a concern, right? We cannot shy away from the fact that there is a problem uh, of not delivering enough or not, not experimenting enough for lack of better terminology, right? Because unless you experiment and unless you have tasted failure of trying to deliver service which would result in upliftment of geography uh, of communities in your respective geographies, uh, you're not going to crack it, right? As an institution, we should be prepared to take that risk. And that risk, unfortunately, purely because of the nature of how our businesses are constructed, which are primarily uh, run from a very risk perspective, instead of get these 200 people out of that village to be able to transact digitally or bring them into the mainstream kind of view, unless these things somewhere kind of, you know, marry and match each other is going to be a difficult task. Uh, you know, I go back to the genesis of Apex and uh, which, which rises from the fact that there is a problem, which I think a couple of people back in 2017 realized, and that's how Apex came into being that let's try and, and, make it frictionless for a financial institution uh, to 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 you know to be able to discover the right fintechs do it fearlessly without risking anything without him you know uh, spending uh, his left arm and right leg doing that and running around making business cases to do this right so we have to realize that there is a concern and we have to figure out that what is the best way to deal with that concern uh, you know your regulators can only do so much but it has to be an inherent change within the organization, which has to change the way that they look at problems. What is the right problem to deal with? Is it the problem that, you know, I need to make my business unit successful or is it that uh, how many people join the, the banking industry and the financial industry today? Because unless they join, it's not going to be successful any which way. Yep. Thanks, Manis. I think this question also actually uh, relevant as well. I'm keen to hear the view from Todd as well from Brancas. Um, I think uh, Todd, you mentioned uh, early on that you know uh, some of the bank has already started with uh, building the API layers uh, as part of you know part of the the journeys for open uh, API. Uh, what, is there any other aspect you know for for this open API to actually can be work uh, more effective as well as more efficient? Um, both from the fintechs and from the bank. Any any other aspect that you, you have not covered? Yeah, I mean, yeah, several. Th these are the conversations we have with, with bank executives. So I think number one is uh, building, building APIs is just a start. And now every vendor to every technology vendor to every bank is talking about building APIs for the bank, right? So there's a lot of confusing terminology. I think it's important to understand that number one, there are a lot of fantastic technology partners that do not require like a $10 million digital transformation, right? That are using open source technology 
that is enterprise grade that that uh, that that supports uh, kind of banking use cases, uh, and and can be done very very efficiently in a matter of weeks, not a matter of you know months or quarters or years. So I think that's number one. Is there are you know I would say think beyond the usual suspects for technology partners. Um, number two is especially during COVID time, there are ways to provide that a bank can provide API products at zero cost. And the reason I say that is because typically a bank has legacy systems where a technology partner can expose an API product, for example, for payments or for transactions or for account opening. And actually it integrates with the bank's existing system. So it doesn't require building new core banking system. It doesn't require undergoing a transformation. It's actually just doing a very quick integration with the bank's existing architecture. So I think the, the, the main point here is, I think there's a lot of assumptions that, you know, when a bank is, is, is looking to build uh, open API products, that it's a, a multi-year journey with, uh, and, and need to wait for all of the regulations to be set up. And actually, there are some very quick wins using the existing bank architecture that can enable uh, these use cases. The ones we've seen during the COVID situation is obviously payments. So allowing customers to do direct debit payments through third parties, right, through fintech partners. Um, number two is account opening, right? And number three is uh, actually authentication. So allowing for bank customers to, you know, validate their identity using their bank credentials with a fintech partner. And um, it's basically like a proxy KYC service, right? Yep, thanks, Bob. I think there's there's uh, another question. Um, you know, this is from Dimas Prakoso. Um, so open banking is good for the CTF. So I, I think I wanted to hear the view from Ivan from the World, from World Bank. Um, so the question from uh, Pak Dimas is open banking is good for uh, CTF and eliminating fraud. But the trade off is that our personal data, uh, phone numbers uh, will be floating on the Internet. If it's, uh, you know, given there are some circumstances like we receive phone calls from the insurance agent, do we need to raise the awareness on how it will be if the open banking policy be implemented? Um, so, Ivan, I think, you know, from your study on, on the policy, uh, do you have some thoughts on this? I, um, yeah, I think there was one part of the question that I didn't quite catch, but uh, generally speaking, I think the, there's still a lot of variety in the way, first of all, the scope of data that mm. is concerned in open banking, um, you know, in terms of, is it only read-only access that we're talking about to, you know, get access to information about products that banks offer? Um, are we talking about getting access to actual transaction records or initiating payments? So there's quite a lot of variety out there from that perspective, number one. Number two, countries are taking slightly different approaches to consent. So to what extent does explicit consent, um, is, is explicit consent required before a particular data record can be accessed? And then I think that what's going to happen more and more is that people won't actually access data per se, but they will be able to run queries, so to speak, intelligent queries that give you an answer to the question you have without divulging specific data to a third party. Um, and I think that that's still, you know, we're very, at very early stages in that process of sophistication. Um, and definitely we need to be very vigilant about, you know, how these processes are managed so that people are informed of what's going on and what decisions they are making about providing consent or not. But at the same time, I mean, you know, let's be honest about it when with the example you gave about, you know, being solicited, you know, by third parties for new insurance products or, you know, other things. I mean, a lot of that, of course, already goes on today much more in, in some markets like the US and others, um, where they access other records, the, you know, the telephone book, um, Facebook perhaps. You know. So let's, we, we need to also keep in mind that there are many other ways um, today that people can get access to information to 
solicit, you know, or sell products um, beyond what we're talking about today in the context of open banking? Yep. Yeah, I think uh, the point you mentioned, uh, actually some of it has been covered by Part D and as well, right? Uh, from the security perspective, uh, not just, you know, the conventional type of security, but need to consider about social engineering. I think Part D and has uh, mentioned that, which is, I think, definitely very true because this uh, cyber attack and everything is get more creative every day and it's coming back also to the to the discipline of the the, the consumer itself to 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 most extent to be honest yeah so i think uh, there's quite a number of questions that unfortunately given the time uh, we are unable to to cover that so so really apologize uh, for all the the questions that that has that have still left uh, unanswered um, and again i wanted to thanks all the panelists uh, pa erwin makasih banyak pa uh, manis pa dian Todd, uh, Dick, Ivan as well for, for the great insights. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, very good afternoon. I will hand it back to William MC. Thank you. Yes, uh, thank you very much, uh, Pak Subianto, for leading the panel session. Thank you, Pak Erwin. Thank you, Manish. Thank you, Pak Dian, uh, Dick, Todd, and uh, Ivan for sharing your views. So now, as we are approaching the end of today's webinar, I would like to invite Ibu Mercy Simurangkir uh, Managing Director of Indonesia Fintech Association, Aftec, to share her powerful closing remarks. Ibu Mercy, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, William. Well, it's nearing the end of the day. I'm not sure uh, we, we still want to be that powerful anymore, but we keep it short, simple, and sweet. First of all, thank you, uh, Manis. Thank you, the ASEAN Financial Innovation uh, Network. Aftec is really keen to be part of the ecosystem. We're looking forward to encourage Indonesian fintech startups to further participate in the APIC platform and also uh, in the initiative, including in the growth in uh, investment initiatives that you have. I heard from you right now, you have around four to five Indonesian companies or startup, fintech startups in the platform. We look forward to increase that number and also to socialize more to our members. A special shout out and thank you for all of the panelists, Pa Erwin, Todd, Pa Subi, Pa Dian, uh, Dirk, and also uh, thank you for Ibu Mirsa from Bank Indonesia. Pa Erwin, uh, it's very heartwarming for us in Aftec to hear you say that uh, it has proven its contribution to the economy fintech is during the COVID-19 and we are as an industry actually would like to continue our contribution to the success of the national payment system blueprint in Indonesia. You have seen the number of questions in your Q&A uh, chat. There are a lot of interest, a lot of questions, and also uh, a lot of things that the industry wishes to talk to Bank Indonesia to ask the especially about the governance of the I Open API initiative, data security, data governance, who will be governing that. I wish to be able to continue as an industry together uh, the consultation with the I with ASPI also, and we're happy to inform you that through our uh, our financial system working group still happen, Pa, and we continuously transform the working group itself. Uh, we are in working progress to do so, so that it mirrors and it can help to uh, to create and provide contribution to the Bank Indonesia working group and to ASPI. So. Thank you very much, everyone. Uh, we are also looking forward to have another round of open API discussion with our colleague in the Financial Services Authority. But Erwin have a good friend over here, over there. We must not forget him, and we shall include him in the next round of discussion, as this is a very important uh, and key milestone discussion for the industry. So thank you very much, everyone. Yes, thank you very much, Ibu uh, Mercy Simorangkir, for the closing remarks. Uh, once again, on behalf of Indonesia uh, Fintech Association, AFTEC, we would like to extend our highest uh, gratitude and appreciation to Pak Erwin, uh, also to Bank Indonesia and team, uh, to Manish, to uh, Pak Subianto, to Pak Dian, to Dirk, uh, Todd, uh, and also Ivan uh, for being here today. So uh, we would like to also thank um, ASEAN Financial Innovation Network, Brancas International Finance Corporation World Bank Group and BNEX for the good collaboration in hosting today's webinar. 
and to all of the participants, thank you very much for being here and staying uh, a little bit late. Uh, we really appreciate it. And please stay tuned to Aftech updates on activities and upcoming webinars. And by the way, for those unanswered um, questions, we are going to hand the questions to related uh, panelists and speakers. And once we got the answers, we will send it to you accordingly. Uh, once again, thank you everyone for staying and see you again in the Aftec next webinar series. Have a good evening, everyone. Bye-bye. Okay. okay, thank, thank you. you. Bye.